Right, so we're going to check out uh, today's workout, which includes some of my rehab plan. I've got to uh, film one of the things, but uh, I'll explain more about that uh, as we get into the video. So yeah, let's go on with it. Right, so I went and got seen this Monday um, by the physios on campus to get a diagnosis for this problem, and they have now given me a rehab program to follow for the next week until my next check-in. Uh, so essentially what I've done is a, a suplexion in my rotator cuff, which basically means I've sort of dislocated my shoulder very quickly and then it sort of half popped back in and now it has gone back in fully. I felt another pop a couple of days later after the initial um, injury. Uh, so that pain has subsided, but I've still got pain in, my, in the back of my rotator cuff and around my rear delt muscles and such. So yeah. But first off, on this ogu ball or something, I can't know what it's called. Um, basically, starting in the middle, slowly waking, making my way down to the side, just small, um, small movements. Doing that for eight repetitions, up and down, and yeah, doing that for two sets, two sets of eight. Uh, really gets whatever's wrong back here firing and uh, aching, but in a good way. So yeah, and then we got some uh, band isometric holds. So point here, just to you know not to fully extend the muscle in that range of motion that hurts, but just sort of to go from uh, 90 degrees at 45 degrees with my uh, elbow tucked in against my side, uh, keeping that all the tension on the back of my rotator cuff and such. And yeah, this um, felt really good. Um, yeah, I can, I can definitely see how this is, this is helping. Um, again, the, the trick here was um, trying to keep the tension throughout the whole whole movement, which was more difficult than I thought it would be because I was also a bit of a numpty and wrapped the band around um, one, one of the hooks and it kept coming off. So you see with my other hand, I'm having to hold it in place. But nonetheless, got this done, uh, another three sets of eight for this. And um, I can already feel the improvements after this session. I was a little pumped up, but it felt good. And then here is um, one, probably, probably the most complicated one, which took some explaining for me to really understand how to redo. But um, it's basically shoulder floss is what it's called. And you take, you take a band and then 90 degrees with your arms, lean them back slightly to the point where it sort of engages the muscles in, in a position that doesn't hurt too much, but is engaging them. And then go back and forth for, I want to say, yeah, two sets of, two sets of eight. So two sets of eight each side, so 16 reps in total. And yeah, that's uh, feeling pretty good. Now moving on to the actual workout itself, uh, main shoulder workout, I know. Me being me, right after I went to go see the physio, uh, the later that night, I was training shoulders, funnily enough. But luckily this injury has not inhibited my overhead press dramatically at all. Really, I, I don't feel any pain when I'm doing my, my main overhead press sets which is a relief because my main concern when it first happened was how is it going to over affect, over affect my overhead press? How is this going to you know, pu push me back in, in terms of preparing for the UK's strongest team in January? Uh, luckily, um, it has not slowed down my momentum at all. If anything, um, yeah, I just seem to be getting better. This was like 85 kilos, five sets of three. So, uh, it's basically a... Even if I was wearing sleeves, this would be in a PR, but the fact I'm doing this sleeveless um, is just a whole nother level. Um, the work I did at the beginning of this program, um, where I did lots of pauses and dips and very slow and controlled and considered reps has really paid off when the, wep uh, when the weights have been getting uh, uh, heavier. And if anything, my being conscious of my injury made me kind of hold back on this because I remember going through all the sets I was always very conscious of it so I I took a lot more of a break in between each rep to get to reset get in a good position for my press and then go again you know to re-establish my foot position if I needed to and all around my reps were cleaner more considered so who knows maybe maybe being injured is actually pretty anabolic if I do say so myself but uh yeah here we go for the last set, 85 kilos, three reps, getting psyched up. And yeah, honestly, it's a joke, man. Like the last set moving as easy as, as the first, um, that second rep, 
absolutely flew up. And then here we go, last one. Easy, man. Slight dip there to get it up, but honestly, probably didn't need it. Chuffed with that. So, next week we're looking at like probably 90 kilos. I don't know, maybe five sets of two, but I mean, that, geez, that would be insane. Or maybe fewer sets, but keeping it with triples. I'll just see what how, how it goes, what my, what my coach decides. Anyways, moving on to high incline dumbbells. Started off with um, 26s, I know, which is what I've actually been doing for the past couple weeks, but today it was just feeling spectacular, I think. Well, I've been doing 26s and 28 kilo dumbbells for the past couple of weeks, and I had three sets of 10 today. Started off with the 26s, wasn't sure, like, how how I was feeling with this and yeah they absolutely flew and you see uh, straight after I've done the set I'm walking off putting them back coming back with the 28s um, full of confidence and yeah you'll see now in the ne next clip just how easy those 28s now move like it I was I was gassed <laughs> like, I can't lie like it was it was great and um, at this point I, I knew like even just getting started with the first couple reps of um, with the 28s I knew I, I could go on to do the 30s for the last set and then, in all in all reality, this is a prescribed RP nine. I if I was going to meet that across all three sets, maybe could have done the thirty kilo dumbbells for all three sets. Not a hundred percent sure, um, but I like to think I probably could have. Um, maybe on an off day it would have been twenty eight, but today was a really good day, so I really think that today uh, I could have pushed it if I had that knowledge and that confidence, but obviously beforehand, the past couple of weeks, I've been doing 26s and 28s, so I didn't have the confidence, I didn't have the the uh, reason to do so, I didn't have the um, evidence that I'm, I was strong enough to do that until today, so next week, uh, when I've got that again, we'll see, hopefully I'm feeling as good next week as I was this week, and uh, that'll, be, that'll be sick, and yeah, here we go, last rep, nice and deep, I say that's a true RP9 rep, if I do say so myself, yeah. Right, then we're gonna move on to seated shoulder press. Honestly, one of my favorite bits of equipment at this gym, hammer strength, seated shoulder press. Um, honestly, yeah, but when I first used it, I, I was I was baffled, like, because I'd never used something like it. Um, and I felt like my shoulders were always gonna like pop out every time I did this, but no, I've grown to love it. Um, and then here we have, 80 kilos, for three sets of 12, RPE 9. Let's just, yeah, wait wait for that last rep. Especially when it comes to the last rep, I like to pause at the bottom, go extra deep, and then really squeeze it out. Okay, here we go. See. If you ever need a video example of what an RPE 9 <laughs> rep looks like, I say that's a very good example. Any more difficult and any more like stuck at halfway point trying to get it, trying to grind it out, and I had to consider that an RPE 10. But um, yeah, good RPE 9 uh, set. And then, yep, just finishing off with some rear delt flies and a really good shoulder session. And I'll see you guys for this week's event session and deadlift session. It's a good one.